At an Italian Army Air Defense Artillery Command in Sabodia, Rheinmetall handed over something that looks deceptively familiar, a cannon on a truck paired with a radar and a command post. But if you think this is just a modern repaint of Cold War anti-aircraft guns, you're missing the real story. Italy has just taken delivery of its first Skynex short-range air defense system under a 73 million euros contract with an option for three more systems, and that single delivery says a lot about where European air defense is heading, what NATO learned the hard way, and why the most urgent air threat today often costs less than the tire on the interceptor meant to stop it. For years, Western militaries treated short-range air defense as the boring layer of the stack, important in theory, easy to postpone in practice. Why spend political capital and procurement budgets on gun-based air defense when high-end fighters, long-range missiles, and layered networks seemed to promise dominance? Then reality returned, and it returned with a buzzing sound. The drone is not just a weapon, it's a business model for the attacker. You can buy or build thousands of airframes, except high attrition, and keep probing until something slips through. In Ukraine, that relentless pressure made one thing painfully obvious. If you can't economically defend the last few kilometers, your expensive long-range systems end up wasting their shots, your logistics nodes get hunted, and your civilian infrastructure becomes a strategic hostage. So the question becomes uncomfortable. When your opponent is attacking with low-cost drones, do you really want to answer with missiles that cost orders of magnitude more? Skynex is Rheinmetall's answer to that question, and Italy's decision to field it in the standard configuration is the strategic signal here. This isn't just Italy bought a system. Italy became the first NATO member to introduce Skynex with the 35mm revolver gun Mech 3 and the X-Star 3D radar as a complete integrated package. In alliance terms, being first matters. It shapes doctrine, interoperability discussions, training pipelines, and follow-on procurement logic. It also sends a message to other ministries of defense watching the same drone footage and doing the same arithmetic. If Rome is willing to bet on a cannon-based solution as a core part of force protection, what does that say about the threat environment NATO expects over the next decade? The technical core is straightforward, but the implications are not. The revolver gun MIPK-3 fires 35mm rounds at up to 1,000 rounds per minute with an effective range of roughly 4 kilometers. That number is important because it defines the last line problem the space where targets are close enough that reaction time is measured in seconds, where clutter and urban terrain complicate tracking, and where the attacker can saturate the defender with cheap, numerous objects. In that space, the physics of a fast-firing gun remain brutally relevant. And Skynex isn't just throwing dumb steel into the sky. It uses programmable A-head ammunition, which essentially turns each round into a precise airburst effect tailored to the target, creating a controlled cloud of projectiles at the right point in space. Rheinmetall emphasizes that this approach is resistant to electronic countermeasures and that matters because drones thrive on the modern battlefield's electronic chaos. If jamming and spoofing are everywhere, you want an effector that still functions when RF conditions degrade and a cannon is fundamentally less negotiable than a radio link. Now add the sensor layer. Italy's configuration includes the XTAR 3D radar, reportedly able to monitor airspace out to about 50 kilometers. That range doesn't mean the gun suddenly reaches 50 kilometers. It means the system can see the fight early, classify targets, and cue engagements with enough time to make good decisions instead of panicked ones. Early detection is the difference between orderly defense and reactive desperation. More importantly, Skynex is built around modularity that separates surveillance from firing units, feeding radar data into a command and control network that assigns targets to available effectors. In plain terms, this is air defense as a coordinated ecosystem rather than a single weapon. Why does that matter? Because the air threat is diverse. A slow drone, a fast cruise missile, and a loitering munition do not present the same problem. And a single magic interceptor is the wrong answer to a mixed raid. A modular architecture lets you plug in different sensors and effectors as the threat evolves, and it also makes procurement more flexible. You can scale batteries, adapt firing units, and integrate legacy components. That last point is critical for Europe, where armed forces rarely have the luxury of replacing everything at once. Rheinmetall notes that Skynex can integrate other systems, including elements from the Skyshield and Skyguard families, as long as a dedicated tracking unit is available. That is an industrial and operational strategy. Preserve what you already have, modernize the brain and network, and then add effectors that fit the mission. It's also a way to solve the European problem of fragmentation, where every country has slightly different inventories, doctrines, and procurement cycles. A modular system offers a path toward good enough commonality without demanding identical fleets. But the most persuasive argument is not the radar, the rate of fire, or even the network. It's cost. 
Drone warfare is economics disguised as tactics. If an attacker can spend a few tens of thousands of euros on a drone and force a defender to launch a missile worth hundreds of thousands or millions, the attacker is not just trying to hit a target, they're trying to bankrupt the defense. That is why Ryan Mittal frames Skynex as a solution for scenarios where missile-based systems are less effective or cost-efficient. Guns and programmable ammunition are not free, but they can be far more sustainable for routine interceptions, especially when the threat is a swarm of low-cost aerial systems. The uncomfortable reality is that modern air defense is not only about can you hit it, but can you keep hitting it tomorrow and the day after and for months. Operational credibility is the other half of the equation, and here Ukraine is the proving ground everyone studies. Rheinmetall says Skynex systems are already in operational use with Ukrainian forces, protecting people and infrastructure under combat conditions, and points to that experience as evidence of effectiveness against drones and cruise missiles. That matters because paper capabilities are easy to sell, combat performance is harder to argue with. If a system can survive the friction of real warfare with all the maintenance constraints, operator fatigue, and unpredictable threats that entails, it becomes far more than a brochure promise. And if Ukraine's reality is a preview of what high-intensity conflict looks like in Europe, then the appetite for proven short-range solutions will only grow. Italy's move also sits in an alliance context that's quietly competitive. Rheinmetall mentions Romania selecting Skynex as well, but paired with a different gun already in Romanian service, the GDF-009 twin gun, that contrast is revealing. Some militaries will try to modernize by bolting new networks onto legacy effectors. Others will buy the integrated package to standardize performance and logistics from day one. Neither approach is inherently wrong, but each signals different priorities and constraints. Italy choosing the full standard configuration suggests a push for a cohesive, modern short-range layer, not just a patchwork upgrade. It also strengthens the industrial argument for local support and training through Rheinmetall's Italian subsidiary, which matters when you want readiness, not just acquisition. So what does this mean going forward? First, it confirms that Shorad is no longer a niche capability. It's becoming central to how armies survive under constant aerial harassment. Second, it shows that gun-based air defense is not obsolete, but evolving into a networked, programmable, high-precision tool designed for exactly the threats that missiles are least suited to address at scale. Third, it hints at procurement momentum. The initial 73 million euros contract includes an option for three additional Skynex systems, and the real question is not whether Italy can field one battery but whether it will build enough density to protect maneuver units, key infrastructure, and the logistical arteries that make everything else possible. In a world where drones can appear over cities and front lines with little warning, does a single battery solve the problem or merely acknowledge it? The larger takeaway is this. Europe is rediscovering that air defense is not a single shield you raise once, but a continuous, layered, economically sustainable campaign. Italy's first Skynex delivery is a practical step in that direction, a recognition that the close and very close range fight is not secondary anymore. And if the alliance is serious about resilience in the drone age, the most important systems may not be the ones that reach the farthest, but the ones you can afford to fire, reload and fire again without blinking when the buzzing starts overhead. If you want more deep dive breakdowns like this, focused on the logic behind the hardware and the strategy behind the headlines, subscribe and stay with the channel.